Hey, what's going on, CoinUp TV subscribers? Robert, welcome here. In this video, we're going to talk about C, episode six, which is called Silk on Apple TV Plus. Before I get started with this video, this video will contain spoilers. And also, I'd like to give a little bit of a shout out or a heads up or a thank you to all the brand new subscribers or the new people commenting on some of my videos talking about uh, Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus shows. So, uh, so thanks a bunch for your feedback and criticism and concerns. So uh, let me get started. I've got my show notes here. Um, so I'm going to try and avoid getting into a lot of the story elements and just kind of uh, pick out some of the beats or the moments that kind of stood out, the important things that I wanted to sort of react to in uh, this video. And hopefully I'll get your feedback and your take and your thoughts. So a um, couple big ones here. So we get to find out that Boots is a traitor or is a freelancer for hire. He's out for himself. He's a gun for hire. He tricks Baba Voss and his uh, family that's remaining into a cave and then to an elevator that descends down into these dark caves. We find out that uh, he's apparently been doing this to other people. And uh, his mom, Dila, is actually down there in this little underground tribe who uh, it was puts him in this little room with these glowing orbs and stuff. So it's sort of interesting to see uh, Boots kind of being fleshed out as kind of this person that you thought, you know, you can sympathize and trust. And it turns out that he's um, not trustworthy or he's just kind of out for himself. I mean, I guess that's the, the plan here is, hey, in the future, and much like in the in the current present tense, uh, you know, you got to watch out. You got to watch who you trust. You got to, um, you know, make sure that... Uh, uh, you know, it's hard to take people at face value and stuff. So I guess that's the kind of the lesson that Baba Voss and, and his group are learning here. So another thing was interesting to see, like when they went underground, it was interesting to see a little bit of a switch where Baba Voss's abilities to sort of uh, hear and touch became uh, a little stronger, outweighed kind of uh, the twins being able to see because they were in darkness. They were kind of like had a piece of paper lit there and uh, their little note. And um, when that went out, it was like, all right, we got to rely on Baba Voss. I kind of wish they would have delved into this actually a little longer and maybe had more explorations of the caverns before they got kind of uh, attacked and, and beat up and caged again. You know, it would have been interesting to see his... Um, specialties as a tracker and explorer you know through darkness so although how much of that could be you know cinematic to see uh the episode was already pretty dark overall so maybe that's the the producers and the director wanted to get out of the complete darkness there so we jump over to queen kane my least favorite character of the show but i know some of you guys watching seem to love her queen kane gets knocked around the labor camp and this triggers a flashback and we see kane's father i think it's his father on the deathbed on his deathbed and a younger margra younger kane, uh, kane she's got some hair looks a little different who uh and then we find out that um the father whispers into margra's ear he's like hey you know you got to take over the throne so we, we see that you know the king actually meant the throne to be for Magra and not so much Cain. So that sort of, um, you know, brings out some backstory, some uh, dynamic there. And and the, what I found interesting, I like the editing choice there. I thought it was uh, clever and stylized the way they started the flashback with Queen Cain's voiceover and her narration. And then went into the flashback. And then when it came out of the flashback, we were sort of in uh, Margaret's head and she was uh, telling the story, her point of view in the story to the witch hunter general, uh, Tamakta Jun, and uh, kind of explaining how, hey, I'm supposed to be the queen and you should have been obeying me all this time and not sort of second guessing me because she's in sort of the uh, witch hunter or the witch finders camp there. And um, kind of uh, explaining, uh, you know, why she's been sort of banished or exiled this many years and uh, kind of explaining that. So uh, so that, that was interesting. I like that stylistic choice there in the, the editing and the direction there. Uh, in fact, this episode, we get a lot of backstory. We, we get the confirmation that uh, our man Jerla Morel was uh, two-timing or he was with, you know, Queen Kane and then he ran off with... Um, the younger sister Magra there, and uh, many years ago, I, you know, I guess the perception is that Magra stole Jill Morrell from Kane, and that's why she was. All right, we gotta, we gotta get on the hunt. We gotta go get him. We gotta go find him. This is bad news. Um, back in present time, uh, Cutter, the guy who runs the slave labor camp there, lives up to his name. Cutter, he actually uh, takes. Cain and puts her down and cuts out like a little charm that's that's in an amulet that's inside of her chest there. That was a little gross. I had to kind of wince a little bit there. She Queen, Queen Cain is betrayed by the, the lady in the camp. We, we knew that was coming. It was just a matter of time. So, uh, so that's pretty messed up. I guess if you're like me and you're not a fan of Queen Cain, 
the hope here is to try and sympathize with her and be like, man, she was a, she might have been a bad person or, or evil, but these bad things are happened to her and now I'm sympathizing and empathizing with her. I think that's kind of the goal, but, uh, eh, you know, maybe, maybe another episode I'll start empathizing with her. So, uh, let's see, what else did I write down here? Boots. Is, uh, is a bad guy. Okay, I talked about that. Bait boots and trapping Delia. And the actress playing Delia, though, I think it's uh, Marissa. It looked like somebody that I actually know in real life, so I thought that was kind of kind of cool. I'll have to check IMDb and see when they get the credits on there. Uh, we did get to see this cool action scene. I think, I think it's great that at least in every episode there seems to be some sort of action fight scene with Jason Momoa's character, Baba Voss, and a bunch of bad guys. We got to see this, like, kick-ass scene. Uh, in the little tunnel there under the elevator shaft. Uh, the greatest moment of the episode was when uh, Jason Momoa just like rips a dude's head off from like his teeth there in, in half. I was like, yes, you know, like um, that was that was cool. And uh, of course he had the pickaxe, he was kind of like stabbing people and smashing them. So so that was cool. A little bit of dark, but you know, obviously we're underground. And even the stuff with him climbing up and um, trying to get to the twins there, I thought that was well paced or well edited and shot. And uh, for a moment, I thought Baba Voss was gonna, you know, fall down the elevator shaft, and he didn't. And you know, I got the hands, and it got up there. So, good job. We 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 got to, you know, we got to see see Baba Voss's, uh, you know, journey, you know, with the with the twins and the bonding and and everything like that. And then we find out at the uh, at the end of the episode here, it's clear that Boots is just, you know, again a freelancer for hire. He actually approaches Magra in the camp there with. Uh, to Mike the June and his soldiers, and he's like, hey, you need me by your side. I can see, I have abilities that you don't. And he actually tells her about, you know, the shadows that are lurking around through the camp. Speaking of the shadows, a lot of people have been leaving feedback on the shadows and the take of my, my take on the shadows and impressions, stuff like that. I still believe that the way the shadows are handled in the show is a little unclear and strange. And when you see them, it looks like they can see or they have magical abilities, but Apparently they're just regular people that throw some paint on them and suddenly can do things that uh, the regular tribes people can't. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, I like the way the episode ended. It was kind of a fun cliffhanger. Um, if anything, it's interesting to see how uh, as we go, you're trying to sympathize and empathize with King, Queen Kane, And then when it comes to Margra, you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, maybe I don't care or like her as much anymore. And and it's kind of interesting to see the dynamic that they're, the show is putting in. This this was by far, by far the best episode, I think, so far. I was excited to watch it. I was on the edge of my seat. I was uh, along for the journey. I like the exposition and the flashbacks there and the pacing. I thought it was great overall. So, so I enjoyed it. Uh, thumbs up to uh, C, episode six, Silk, on Apple TV+. Plus. It's a shame there's only a few more episodes to go and the show is really getting good. So uh, I, I guess at this point, I just hope it finishes up strong. And thanks a bunch for watching. Again, if you guys are brand new, please like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things for Coin TV. We'll see you next time.